when analyzing the lower phase, you look at it from a surgical or non-surgical perspective, you really want to look at the mountains and the valleys, the shadows that are forming in the face. So when I'm injecting the chin, I'm looking at the symmetry of the chin, I look at it from on top and on bottom. I'm looking at where the chin sits. If it sits high, you have to think, okay, maybe they have something called mentalis hypercontracture. So first thing, you look at that, make sure that's not happening. Because if it is, you want to correct that with Botox. Then you say, okay, next step, fill it. Looking at the photos that we just did, find easy example is hers because there's not much wrong with her at all. She looks great. And so all we're doing is accenting a tiny bit there, which makes her jawline look straighter, and then a tiny bit in the pre-jaw socket as well. So you can see the same thing. It just gives a little bit of strength, but still feminine. The problem, again, is you can inject them perfectly today, and then again in a year, and again in a year, but if you keep adding things to the lower face here, it's gonna get boxy and heavy, and droopy at some point. So this is nice and delicate. Not much can go wrong with this. And you can see there, the free gel, it's a little triangular space over there. It's filled and matched, and the chin just comes forward to bring it back downwards. She does have a little bit of mentalis contracture, but it's very mild. When we're doing fillers, we don't want to use a lot of volume. We want to use small amounts of volume. This is not like adding bone. You're adding watery, doughy substance. It's gel. If you keep adding gel to the face, it's going to draw in water and it's going to make people look like they have a tumor at some point along the sides of their jowls. They actually get real jowls like a dog. So you have to avoid injecting people too much. This is small, delicate amounts. It accumulates over time. You don't want to do that.